Hello everyone, this is Jason for Primetime Aquatics and I thought it would be really cool today to take a look at our shell dwellers and I wanted to rank them. We've had a number of them in the fish room over the years. I wanted to rank them, see what you think. Would love to hear from you in the comments section below. What are your favorite shell dwellers or which ones would you like to keep the most? Appreciate you being here. Hope you enjoy the video. Number seven on my list are these Lampralagus signatus. I like these fish. I like the body shape and the coloration. The males were a little bit harder on one another compared to other shell dwellers. You can see here in a number of the pictures that we have, we don't have a lot of footage of these fish. We didn't have them in the fish room that long. They were fairly well spread out in that 20 gallon. And even at a very young age, they would pick on one another, chase each other around. Now, number six is Neolamprologus brevis. That's the one in the upper left-hand corner. I have these in with some Cyprochromus leptosoma. That is the other fish that you see here. You can see them right in the center there. I do like these fish. They've kind of got that bulldog looking face, an interesting silver color to them. And they do have a rather aggressive sort of personality for a shell dweller, not overly aggressive. We do get some fry survival in this tank, but not nearly as much as some of the other shell dwellers I'm gonna mention in a few minutes. These are cool, especially if you're looking for a more silver shell dweller with a little bit of purple. Number five on my list are these Neolampralagus meleagris. These, are, these might be the most aggressive shell dwellers that we've had in our fish room. Here's one just kind of chilling out and probably some of the larger ones as well. I do like the patterning. I think the color is pretty cool there. We've got a pair sitting by some shells, but they were aggressive so much so that we had some gold ocelatus in this 125 and the Meliagris were certainly, at least in terms of the shell dwellers, they were the top dog in this tank. They were a little bit shy compared to the other shell dwellers I've had, even when I had larger groups of somewhere between six and 10, they just weren't as personable. These guys here, number four, gold ocelatus. I love these shell dwellers. The colors are absolutely outstanding. This happened to be like a 10 gallon grow out tank. We've got some gravel in there, not the way that I would recommend keeping these. All shell dwellers should be on sand. But again, these fish are absolutely amazing. Now we've done species profiles on a number of the fish that we are featuring today. So if you want more information on how to breed them, how to keep the fish, I'm gonna put those videos in the description below and they'll pop up in the upper right hand corner periodically as well. But definitely these shell dwellers are great. That purple color, now they are pretty aggressive for a shell dweller. I'd put them, Meliagris were pretty aggressive. These guys are too. So much so that if you put your hand in the tank and they are protecting fry inside of a shell, expect to be attacked. Uh, so when changing out sponge filter media or cleaning sponge filters, putting your hand in a tank, trying to do any kind of rearranging, they're gonna let you know that your hand is not welcome in that tank. And you can actually see in some of the shots that we have here that they have little fangs. Most shell dwellers do, or almost all of them do, but these guys especially are aggressive. And when it comes to keeping them together, it can be a little bit more problematic as well, especially when you're in those smaller tanks like a 20 long. Now we happen to have a number of them in a 20 long. It worked out okay. The other problem compared to some of the other shell dwellers we're going to talk about is the fry tend to go missing unless you remove them. So it's just something to keep in mind. is Neolampus similis. I absolutely love these shell dwellers. If you want a shell dweller that is going to look great on darker sand with a darker background, this may be the fish for you. These are great. They're easy to breed. They look very similar and behave very similar to Maltese, which we're going to discuss here in a moment. And they are easy to keep. So this is a, a, a fish where it's not nearly as aggressive as the Ocelatus or maybe the Meliagris that we talked about before, but definitely a fish that if you're looking for a beginner fish to get into keeping shell dwellers, this may be the one. I 
said at the beginning, one of the fish really technically isn't a shell dweller, and that's these guys, the Neolamprologus caudopunctatus. But because of their size and their behavior, I include them in this video because I wanted to, and because I really absolutely love these fish. The colors are second to none, as you can see with those bright blue eyes and the coloration of the body and the really pretty dorsal fin. I love these fish. We have found them to be very easy to breed, as you can see. We have two standard 20 gallon setup where we started with six in each tank and they wound, us, wound up giving us many, many more. But these are a great fish if you're looking for something a little bit different. They can be a little bit harder to find than some of the more traditional shell dwellers or shell dwellers in general. And again, we've got shells in this tank, but it's really because sometimes the adults will move the fry to those shells so they can hang out there as opposed to just hanging out directly in the in the rock work behind uh, the, the tank there. So these are amazing fish, not technically shell dwellers, I know, but definitely one of my top favorites. Yes, number one has got to be the Neolamprologus multifasciatus, otherwise known as the Maltese. I'm sure many of you are not surprised by this. We have a couple of tanks set up. This is a 40 gallon breeder, which we set up more recently. And we also have the 50 gallon low boy that you're looking at now. And we have bred thousands of these fish. The personalities are second to none. You can see they enjoy being in a very large colony. I believe when we started this tank, this 50 gallon low boy, I think I had maybe six or eight Maltese in this tank. And the population quickly grew to a couple hundred at least. And there are usually between 150 and 200 Maltese in this tank. And they are absolutely fantastic. They are going to rearrange everything as all shell dwellers do. They're going to rearrange your substrate and bury shells and do all kinds of stuff. And as long as you're willing to accept that, these can be an absolutely awesome fish. I would say of all the fish we've talked about, this is the ideal beginner shell dweller. And again, if you want more information on how to breed shell dwellers, I'll put those videos in the description below. Check out these videos in the upper and lower right hand corners. They should be very helpful for you coming up here in a minute, but wonderful fish. Thank you so much for being here. Hope you enjoyed the video. Would love to hear from you down in the, in the comment section below. What is your favorite shell dweller? Thanks for being here and we'll see you in the next one.